All right, good to see everybody here this evening. Welcome to the service. All right. Well, we have a lot to cover here. We're going to talk about the Philippines a little bit, and uh, not the book of Philippians, uh, the Philippines, all right? And I uh, had a great time there in a the month of October. Uh, with Brother Kawili and different churches there. Now, I'm going to just show a few slides here tonight that, uh, that I had that I took. A, Brother Yoder and I, were, we were there in the Philippines, and we saw each other in the morning and, in, and sometimes late at night. And other than that, we went different directions every day and uh, kept us busy. Uh, there were a few times we got to be together. Uh, and he's got, a, he's got just a beautiful presentation that uh, he and his wife put together, and uh, it's really good. How long is your video, Dave? Seven minutes or so? Oh, about 13? Okay. And uh, so I'm going to let him, I'm going to get my pictures. I'm just going to go through them as fast as I can so you can see them. And then you'll see the, the, the A version when he gets to show his, okay? <laughs> and uh, I'm not as, we're, we're not, we just kind of put this together. But, you know, when, you, when I think of the, the believers there in the Philippines that we got to meet, James 2 and verse 5, Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him. And uh, I think that verse fits so aptly, the Filipino believers there. And uh, love for God, and uh, love to do, love to reach their people for the Lord. And I uh, hope you'll see that when we go through our slides tonight, okay? I'm going to do this, show the slides, sing another song, shake hands, have the offering, then we're going to let Brother Yoder do his video and preach to you. Okay, that's what's going to happen. All right, so just take your shoes off, not go anywhere for a little bit, and uh, enjoy it this evening. Okay, all right. Somebody have the lights? Now I got to look this way and point this way. Is that what you're telling me? Wow. All right, try to do this. I got to keep this going this way. All right, is that going to work? I'm hitting the forward, and it's not happening. All uh, right, that's the motel we stayed at. Isn't that nice? This isn't working, Dean. How come not working? What do I got to do? Uh, that's little LJ. She's their daughter, born with a heart defect. She's had three heart surgeries already. She needs an ablation treatment. And uh, we brought her medical records home. We've given them to Doc Martin. He's sending them to a cardiologist that he knows. We're praying that we can get her help for that surgery. Whoop. That went through that one too quick, huh? Oh, well. This is the mall that we went to to eat several times. And uh, they have security at the door. They check you out when you come into the mall. This is the town hall there at Tarlac. We were in Tarlac City. If you can't, hard to see that, but it says Independent uh, Baptist Church of Tarlac. That's the Fundamental Baptist Church, okay? This is one of the Fundamental Independent Baptist Church of Tarlac, Kal Kalinquan. It's all these little villages around, they went out and they, they established a church in the village for the people to come to. You get a little look at their living conditions. That's our missionary, Jessica Willie, and his wife, Lena. Wow, I'm getting a workout here, man. This is the Tarlac State University, where we got to speak one of the first nights we were there to a bunch of people who are training to be police officers. These are some of the faculty administration there that got us in. This is the crowd we spoke to that night in the classroom. And this is another one of the churches in the village with Pastor Joseph Grande. This little lady you see there, she's the one who gave this church the property to build the building on. Inside the building. Just a look in the street, you see the little taxis they have there. Motorbikes with a sidecar. I, had a, I think you've got a picture. Do you have that picture in yours? Uh, Brother Dave went soul winning in one of these things, and uh, you got to see that. You got to see that. That's pretty cool. The, there are just hundreds, of th thousands of these everywhere you go. Inside the church, 
they had banners made up most places we went, both for Brother Dave and myself. And always, every time you had a service, at the end of the service, all the church wanted to come up and get a picture taken with you. There's that lady. She's a fireball, I'm telling you. This is the big church, the Independent Baptist Church you saw there, Fundamental Independent Baptist Church of Tarlac. This is a big auditorium there. They have three baptistries across the front to baptize folks. You'll see that in a little bit. All right. Brother Yoder spoke to the pastors uh, on a Saturday morning. They have uh, kind of like a pastor's training, uh, 7 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Try getting pastors in America to come out at 7 a.m. on Saturday till 9.30. <laughs> this is a building they're building that's under construction, of course, and uh, they're putting it up. Another one that's behind it that they're just getting the rebar up for. Dr. Yoder. This is some of the baptisms from that Sunday. They had two of them going that Sunday. As soon as one's done, the next one we baptized. I think, Brother Yoder, I want to say like 35, 37, something like that, were baptized that morning. This is a picture of the crowd that day. It was pretty full, as you can tell. Invitation time, good response to the invitation of folks coming and praying and making decisions. That's lined up back the aisle. These are the pastors of the different churches around. They all come together for one big, they call it the Big Sunday. And uh, they do that once a month or once every six weeks or so. You see it on the screen, Big Sunday. And they all, they, when they come together, they serve the Lord's table. That's the other side. This is us getting a picture with all the pastors. There's another church that I got to go to with uh, Pastor Randy, and there's a picture of his congregation. Gave me a nice plaque thanking me for coming. Getting a picture of all the church. I think this was going into Manila. On uh, we had, LJ had an appointment to pick up some records, and you know, there's Ford, there's Burger King. They have all the Western stuff that uh, you would think have had the NF cruise ships come into Manila. Uh, we didn't. I'm gonna, we're going to start cruise ship evangelism next year. <laughs> How many want to get involved in that ministry? Yeah, I thought so. All right. This is the missionary in downtown Manila. Brother, Brother Yoder, what's his name? Nueva. Brother Nueva. And he is up like, was it four stories? Four stories up in this, in this is auditorium here, and he and his wife, and Brother Yoder had been friends with him for many years. And uh, that's a good idea of how high up we are. You climb up these steps to get to his building, to get to his uh, church, this apartment building across the street from where he was. This is the open market in Tarlac. Folks, you know, nobody has refrigeration. You just go to the market every day and buy what you need and then take it home. This uh, was a, uh, I think this is where we went to see that, yeah, we went up to see the native Filipinos. These are, these are just about, what, what was our day? Maybe 7,000 of them in the mountain, uh, at the base of the mountain. We just had one little group here uh, that we were able to come to. And uh, these are the, like the Native Americans, these are native Filipinos. And... They brought a big box of apples to give out, but they got gathered them together for Brother Yoder to preach to him. He preached, and Brother Kawili interpreted for him. Of course, not everybody was attentive. Put that little girl to sleep there, but uh, Dad listened anyway. These are the folks who responded and said they accepted Christ as their Savior that day to get their picture taken with us. This is the view from where they are. It's just gorgeous. Then we went to the college, the Fundamental Baptist College for Agents, and Dr. Yoder got to preach there that evening. And these are a picture of some of the men and the ladies leading the music in their little uh, guitar section over there. Girls group that sang, Dr. Yoder. The invitation, good response. They were always very responsive. This is the part of the mall we were at. I think it was three stories of this mall, huge thing, and always busy. 
always people there. Unbelievable. I thought you wanted to see this. This is a nativity, if you can see that, and a nativity scene in front of the McDonald's. You imagine that happening in the United States? This is, you, you recognize this church. This is Brother Sonny Obiena's church that's run on the battery that now has lights. We showed you that picture of Sunday. This is what you took the offering for. And there's Pastor Sonny. By the way, Pastor Sonny got married this past Sunday. Uh, beautiful, beautiful wedding. And uh, praise the Lord for that. Picture of us with the church there. There's the famous battery that they're running off of. Beautiful countryside as we headed up to the mountains to the camp they have right by the Pacific Ocean. That's the Pacific there. Brother Kawili, making sure we know that's the way to heaven. And uh, they had the, the cock crew and uh, woke us up in the morning. This is the church I think Dr. Yoder preached here that evening. I think the next slide is the pastor in him, I think, yeah. I, I put, took this because you've heard of cockfighting. That's what this guy had right next to the church. That's what these guys are doing. He's training these things to, to do cockfights. And uh, I thought that was interesting. That's all the reason that's in there. All right. This was a church I got to go to, Brother Arvin. Every, every, above every window, they had a Bible verse. It was just beautifully decorated. Invitation time, folks very responsive to the message. This was an exciting young church, an exciting young pastor. This is the fellow who gets to preach to the police. He gets to preach to the army. Uh, the, they've started a radio station in town, and the mayor came to him and wants to give him a free hour every week to preach on the radio. Uh, he's just really gotten the favor of the town. There you get to see a picture of the church. And this is the picture, of course, afterwards. And yeah, I was sweating. You can tell that. This is the Filipino National Police. You see that? Imploring the aid of the Almighty, by 2030, we shall be a highly capable, effective, and credible police service working in partnership with a responsive community towards the attainment of a safe place to live, work, and do business. And before they can get any of that done, they have to implore the aid of the Almighty. So we got to preach to them. He introduced that there were about eight officers there. Several of them were away on a, on a training uh, mission that morning, and so there were only eight, eight, eight people there, but they all came to listen, and we got to give, you see them raising their hands, he's asking how many of you have received Christ as your Savior today, and because uh, I gave the gospel to them that morning, and they got, I think eight of them got saved. This is the building they just started constructing, another church and another village nearby to him, and uh, I've since seen pictures now, it's completed, the roof is on, and the walls are all finished. Uh, they've made great progress since we've been gone. Picture of us in front of the building. These are some of the folks that came out that morning to go soul winning. We went out and this is a couple, a brother and a sister that accepted Christ as their Savior that morning. This is another lady that accepted Christ that day. This is another Saturday morning training. We had to go outside under the picnic area because that Saturday from, I think, 8 a.m. until 6 p.m., there was no power. It was announced ahead of time there would be a brownout that day and there'd be no power, so we had to meet outside. So we'd have some light. This is a picnic area there at the church. This was out soul winning later that day on Saturday. Uh, just stopped this place. There was a couple people there, and Brother Coelho talked to them and asked if I could tell them how to go to heaven. So I went over and started talking to them, and then everybody started coming over to listen. And and they just kept coming over. I would talk, and, and he would help interpret at times to make sure they understood what I was saying in English. And these folks said they accepted Christ their Savior, not the little ones, but the, the adults. Were there. This lady had gotten saved uh, the week before, and we brought her a Bible. Uh, to give to her. This is Brother Kawili's church. Those are his two sons that are playing the guitar there. Their choir. This young lady 
just an amazing story. I wish I could tell you all the stories. She's an architect. Uh, she's only 22 years of age. She's no, 24, I'm sorry. She's graduated from the university and uh, just loves the Lord and has a beautiful singing voice. Invitation time again. Very responsive to the invitation. Presenting a couple other ladies we had led to Christ in soul winning. They came to church, and so we presented them with a Bible as well. <laughs> Pastor Appreciation Sunday. Somebody gave Brother Kawili a chicken. And his wife got a kick out of it, you can tell. That's a live chicken, my friends. Unbelievable. And they had a cake to appreciate the pastors, and then, of course, pictures. Then the seven-year anniversary of this church, and they met in a special service in the afternoon underneath this pavilion. Pastor Kawili, and you get a invitation time. These are the ones who received Christ as their Savior that night. These are the pastors that were present that night. This is the crowd that was there. Then we ate afterwards back at the church. This is your toilet. That's it. And when you're done, you take that little green pail and you put water and you put it in the toilet till it flushes. That's it. This was what they were cooking on. There is 7-Elevens. That's why I took that picture. You can see that. There it is. Though I think Brother Yoder got a hot dog there one night and got sick from it, so I'm not sure that quite up to par. This is a, Pastor Rusty, just a year old, and we had an evangelistic meeting with him. At, um, his church, these are folks that came forward and asked Christ to be their Savior. At that meeting, you can see people were standing, not, not where the seats are, but standing around the outside and up on that balcony. People were standing up there listening to the, to the message that night. You can't see that. I can't go backwards, but there are people behind the fence listening as well. Pastor Rusty and some folks. This is Pastor Rusty and his church after one year. This is back at the main church again. They had a special thing for the teenagers on Halloween. They call it Holy Win. And they had a special activity for them that night. And I think these might have been the teens that accepted Christ as their Savior that night. Then we gave Bibles to the pastors that were there through the money that you all had given. In 1040 International, Brother Moreland uh, had us use some of the, mo the money they have for Bibles as well, and we were able to present these men with Bibles. Well, it was a real honor and a privilege to be with Dr. Yoder for that time in the Philippines, and uh, just uh, uh, not only did he do a great job preaching everywhere he went, but he, uh, he's a great encouragement to the pastors. Uh, he spent many hours uh, just personally talking to pastors, and uh, one particular that was pretty discouraged and uh, actually had already turned in a resignation, which was declined, uh, but after spending some time with Dr. Yoder, I think he re-enlisted and was ready to go go get, get with it again and be back in the saddle, and uh, it was just a... Uh, just a delight to be with Brother Yoder. And uh, you look forward to his presentation, and then he's going to bring a Bible study for us tonight. Brother Dave, you come, would you please? And uh, you take it from here. All right. Again, I want to thank you for allowing me to go. Um, right now, my wife and I, we are at 40% of our support, which... <clears throat> Until we get to 50%, that means we can cover our bills that we have. And on top of that is travel. And so because of this church uh, and the special offering that you take for us, that has allowed me to already get busy in what I'm planning to do with 1040 International and throughout the 1040 window. So uh, again, the, the blessings and things that you see on this video is... Uh, directly fruit to your account. 
because it could not be done without you for sure. Um, there's some things on the video that I just wanted to mention. We do mention some numbers at the end, and uh, the numbers that we mention are not in any way inflated at all. In fact, it's bare minimums. There was times we were preaching and had invitation times, and the invitation was very quick, or it was taken over by a national or something like that. And if we just saw three or four hands, that's what we counted for our numbers. But then when talking with nationals and so forth later, they said it was many, many more than that. So the numbers that you hear were, are, are bare minimums. Um, at this time, let's go ahead and take a look at the video. The 2017 Philippines trip was a time of new experiences, spiritual helps, and great excitement. This all started on October 17th when I left Columbus for JFK Airport with Pastor Stan Slaybaugh, who volunteered to go along with me. From there, we had a 15-hour flight to Shanghai, China, and then three and a half hours more to the Philippines. We were surprised to find out that in the Shanghai Airport, within a city of 26 million people, very few airport workers spoke English, and their signs were not bilingual. After standing in a few wrong lines, we made it to the Philippines after a total of 27 hours of travel. The Philippines is an island country in the Pacific of over 110 million people. The country has lush foliage, mountains, and extreme high humidity with hot temperatures. The majority of the time, we were in the province of Tarlac in Luzon, the northern main island of the Philippines. I met with our host preacher, Brother Jess Kowili, at 2.30 in the morning to start our adventure. Please pray for the Kowili's ministry and their daughter, L.J., who is a miracle child. She needs at least one more heart surgery here in the States. During the next day, we drove through the city and surrounding areas to see some of the church plants abroad. Brother Kowili was an architect before he was saved. Along with another civil engineer who became a pastor, Brother Kowili has developed a pattern for making new church buildings for $7,000. Here is one of the buildings where the block is being laid. Their blocks are much thinner, but once positioned, they are filled solid with concrete. I should be able to use this information to help the Indian pastors to build economic buildings of which they are in desperate need. During our first night in the Philippines, we were able to preach to the criminology department of Tarlac City University. There were approximately 135 students in attendance. The next meeting was one arranged by the government to help the poor. After registering, the people could receive some food and medical assistance, and they, in turn, were required to listen to counseling and preaching. Fifty-five people attended, forty-five were saved, additionally three more were saved after individual soul-winning efforts. The following day, we met at the main church for leadership training. I preached and taught a mini-series on leadership. Many of the attending pastors voiced their thankfulness for the training. The next day was Big Sunday at the main church. Pastor Stan Slayball preached with approximately 850 people in attendance. At the invitation time, the altar was packed with people overflowing into the aisles. That evening, I traveled and preached at a small church for Pastor June. The Holy Spirit guided me to preach a message, One Decision from Disaster. Approximately 50 Filipinos were in attendance and three were saved. Pastor June, the national pastor of this church, counseled with me after the meeting. He said that during the message, God was speaking to him specifically. Although I did not know it, 
The previous week, he was so discouraged that he submitted his resignation, wanting to quit the church and his ministry for God. Thankfully, his resignation was not accepted. This national pastor is now revitalized, ready to continue his service for the Lord. Here is their church singing in the Tagalog language. trip we saw God bless day after day after day. One of the highlights of our trip was going to an area of native Filipinos. These people are comparable to our Native Americans. Although the people were very nice to us, we were informed that groups of the tribe who lived deeper in the jungles were still headhunters living by their own laws. With the help of Brother Kuwili as my translator, I preached to them about salvation and knowing God. Approximately 65 were in attendance and 28 were saved. That evening, I had the privilege of preaching to 70 students of the Fundamental Baptist Church of Asia Bible College. Once again, the elders were filled with prayers and tears for greater commitment to God. Following this, we went to a campground in Dingaan where we stayed for two days. We preached to local pastors and to the police department. Also, we went individual soul winning. It was during this time that Brother Kuwili was having trouble with his SUV. We went to a mechanic's garage and both of the mechanics received Christ as their personal savior. The two-day camp yielded 16 people who came to Christ. In the village of Timagwad, I went to a second campground where they were preparing for a big youth activity the following evening. That night, I went soul winning with Pastor Boggs and Pastor Ed. They watched and translated as four more were born again. The Bible says, that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. We can never have peace in our life if we do not know we're going to heaven. So God tells us how we can know for sure. In Romans chapter 3, the Bible says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. The next morning, which was Sunday, I preached at Pastor Eddie's new church plant. Jesus will stay.
Forty-five were in attendance, and thirteen were saved. Fra Pastor Freddie was so excited. For some of the adults that were saved, it was the first time they had ever attended church. Sunday night, I returned to the camp to preach to the youth. We had much circumstantial opposition, and I began to be uh, discouraged. But God, in his kindness, taught me a great lesson and protected us from certain harm when the steering mechanism broke in Pastor Marvin's van. We nursed the van two streets farther to Marvin's father-in-law's house where I met Beanie. This man is only one step away from being a total quadriplegic. During the 40 minutes I spent with him, he spoke of God's goodness and the graciousness of God giving him life. That night, I preached to approximately 140 young people. There were many salvations and over 40 people committed to greater service for God. Our last day in the Philippines, we went soul winning and did track distribution in the local cemetery for their holiday, the Day of the Dead. I passed out approximately 300 individual tracks, preached salvation, and saw no less than 27 people shake my hand and say that they had prayed and sincerely asked Jesus Christ to be their Savior. Less than 10 people would not take the tracks. Our group handed out over a thousand tracks in two hours, with most being read immediately. Although spiritually uplifting, after this intense time of soul winning, I was completely exhausted. In the Philippines, we saw many great things that were done through the power of God. It was a soul winner's dream come true. As long as you were willing to talk, somebody was willing to listen. Although Pastor Slayball and I preached and taught in different locations almost all of the days, we were able to speak to 2,676 people. Over 220 people were saved and hundreds committed to God for greater service for our Lord. Since all glory and praise belongs to the Lord, I can say that these numbers were minimums. I am so thankful that your support is already yielding fruit for our labor. Please continue to pray for us as we plan more trips before our Lord's return. Go to the Philippines and speak to so many people and teach the Word of God. Uh, pastor has asked me tonight to give a little Bible study. It'll be kind of a combination of uh, missions and Christmas. So I'll be done shortly. I will not take long. <clears throat> Please turn in your Bibles to Haggai chapter 1. Haggai chapter 1. It'll probably take you longer to get there as anything. Haggai chapter 1, and I'll begin reading with uh, verse 3, Haggai chapter 1, verse 3, Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Now therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, verse 5, Consider your ways, ye have sown much, and bring in little, ye eat. But ye have not enough, ye drink, but ye have not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. I'd like to preach or just give it a little brief uh, sermon tonight on Christmas considerations. Christmas considerations. And let's pray. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for 
uh, the many blessings that we were able to be part of in the Philippines. And I would ask now that you would help us as we look into your scripture. We thank you for your kindness to us, but I pray, Lord, that we would not just sit back on the things that have already been accomplished and look forward to doing more for you this coming year. We want to tell you that we love you, and we thank you so much for being so kind to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Lord uses the word consider four times in the book of Haggai. Verse 5, the Bible says, Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Number one, let's consider our ways in reference to your priorities. Here God is saying in so many words, uh, you have put your things ahead of mine. He's actually rebuking the nation of Israel here and saying, you know, you have your houses built and you have places to stay, but mine was torn down and all messed up and, and you haven't been able to find time to get to that. As we consider different things at Christmas time, um, it's not keep Christ in Christmas, it's keep Christ first in Christmas. Unfortunately, we as people that are busy about the Lord's work, uh, we, we tend to be as guilty about that as anyone else out there. We get so involved in the, the things that are happening around us with the lights and the tinsel and the trees and the ho, 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 and uh, uh, Cindy Lou Who and the Grinch and all this and that, that we forget about the Lord. Now, I want to tell you that I'm, I'm not uh, necessarily against those kind of things. Uh, the, the Christian life is a balanced life. And, and let me make a statement. This is just um, probably more experience than Bible. So if you want to uh, talk to me about it later, that's fine. But anybody that I know that has gone to the far extreme as far as hating, Christian, hating Christmas and no trees, no lights, no Santa, no nothing. Everybody that I personally know like that, they've lost their kids. The, the Lord, he, he, he was a balanced being when he came here. I'll talk more about that in just a minute. We need to keep Christ first, not just on the 25th of Christmas, but on the 26th and the 27th and the 28th and the 29th and the 30th and the 31st and January and February and all the, through the rest of the year. Christmas and Christianity is not just something that we do. It's who we are. When we talk about considering our priorities, the number one thing is, do you personally have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Now let me explain that. You cannot have a relationship with him if you are not part of the family. That's why Jesus said, Ye must be born again. I'm not saying, do you read your Bible? I'm not saying, do you go to church? I'm saying, do you have a specific time where you were born again? If you don't, you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, you may know something about him historically. And I'll tell you, a preacher and I, we were tickled to death when we went over to the Philippines and we found out they were having a national contest for uh, manger scenes, and so we saw the one at McDonald's there. They had them all through the mall. Everywhere you go, they had a manger scene. What a wonderful thing. But the country overall is Catholic and doesn't even know what it's about. Make sure that that's not your case, that you know some things about Christianity, but you're not a Christian. And then second is your fellowship. We've got to spend time with our Savior if we're going to know Him and know His ways. Now, a big priority for the Lord is missions. And that's why it's so important to us here at Bible Baptist Church. 
Please put your finger here so you don't have to look for it again, but we're going to turn from here and go to Acts chapter 1. We're talking about considering our priorities, and particularly over this Christmas time. It's always right to emphasize missions, even at this time of the year. At Acts chapter 1, verse 8, let's read that. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, a lot of times we, we get... Uh, some teaching and we hear that that means we're supposed to work here in our Jerusalem and we're supposed to work out farther and farther and farther and farther and finally we have the whole earth covered. But really that's, that's not what it's saying at all. First of all, he mentions four different things. He mentions Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth. Imagine if I came up to Quentin and I said, Quentin, I've got uh, four parts at the auto store, and I want you to pick them both up. Well, that, that doesn't make any sense. But he says, uh, be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. If you find out at the time that uh, Judea, the province, was under Roman control. So Judea, Samaria, and Jerusalem, that was all part of the same thing. And then he said the other most part of the earth. So what he's saying is, I want you to be witnesses to everybody that's like you and to everybody that isn't like you. Getting the truth out to people around the world and here in Grove City and Columbus must be a high priority with us. Number two, let's go back to Haggai. Verse seven, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. So number one, we should consider our ways with a reference to our priorities. But number two, let's consider our ways in regard to uh, sacrificial work itself. Verse number 8, Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. See, what's, it, what's this all about? All this is about glorifying our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's why we do the work that we do. I had a, a man came up to me and, and he said, uh, Brother Yoder, uh, do you really like going on those trips? Well, let's see. I love riding on an airplane for 27 hours. I love being away from my wife. I love eating food that tastes terrible and I don't even know what it is. Yeah, it's a wonderful time. Whether I like it or not, that has nothing to do with it. It's funny, you know, the Lord... He has protected me many times from the different things that I ate, but I went to the 7-Eleven and ate a roller dog and got sick. <laughs> but, again, let's consider what's happening here in our church. Maybe we have the right priorities, and maybe we have the mindset that we should have concerning those things. But if we were to make a list and see what we are actually doing as individuals that would be sacrificial work for our Lord, what would be on that list? Can your love for your Savior be seen in your prayers, your giving, and your actual work for Him? You say, well, I come to church three times a week. Well, good for you, but that's for you. It would be worth considering 
Again, I'm, I'm not reprimanding you. I'm not yelling at you. I'm just saying it'd be a good thing for you to consider your work for the Lord. Number three, and I only have four points. We're halfway done. Look at chapter 2, verse 15. Chapter 2, verse 15. And now I pray you consider from this day and upward. From before a stone was laid upon a stone in the temple of the Lord. Let's look at verse 10. In the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying. Number three, consider the, represent, the representation of this day. When we're talking about Christmas. I want you to consider the representation of this day. Again, keep your finger here, but turn to Colossians chapter 2, up in the New Testament. Colossians chapter 2. Easy way to remember that is General Electric Power Company. All right. Go to Colossians chapter 2. We'll read verse 16. Colossians 2.16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Now here the warning is not to judge in these things. It does not say do not do them or that they don't exist. Again, the Christian life is a balanced life, and Jesus, he had feast days, special days, where they celebrated some things. And again, when you go to far extremes, that's when most uh, of your heresies start. You take one thing and you, and you run with it, and you go outside the ends of this book, and you get yourself in trouble. Consider the representation of what Christmas Day represents. Christmas is our representation of the first advent, which is very important. Go over just a couple of pages to 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Verse 16, and without controversy, there's no controversy over this. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. You see, the first advent is not just a children's story. Jesus actually did come to this earth. He left heaven and all of its glories and put on a robe of flesh and became a man. 100% God, 100% man. He never ceased to be God, not for one second. When he was lying in that manger, he was God. When he was in front of the Pharisees uh, preaching, he was God. When they were ridiculing, he was God. When he was baptized by John the Baptist, he was God. When he went under the water, he was God. He came up God. The whole time he was God, but he was man. Consider that. Consider the importance of, of this day that's coming up. Now turn back to Haggai, please. Haggai chapter 2, verse 10. And in the fourth and twentieth day of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying. Well, what day is that? That day is Christmas Eve. Not by a Roman calendar, but by a Jewish calendar. This was probably the time of the conception of Jesus. Question, when does life begin? Does the Bible mention any of this? Go to first go to go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And I'm not trying to prove anything here tonight. I'm just giving you some things to consider. John chapter 1. Beginning with verse 3. All things were made by him. 
And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The light, who is life, shineth in darkness. But that is not a reference to candle power. That's a reference to people. It says here, the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Comprehending is both mental and physical. Turn back one book here to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 29. The Bible says, And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Verse 34, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, saying, I know not a man? So the Holy Spirit of God came upon her. her the, the, the Lord Jesus was conceived in her by the power of the Holy Ghost. A pure thing, completely. But again, comprehending is both mental and physical. People could not lay hands on the light that was in her, and she could not comprehend what was happening at the time. Of course, the birth in the manger, they could. Consider the representation of the day. Please turn to John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verse 22. And the Bible says, And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. When was that? Well, remember that in the Jewish day, the day starts at 6 o'clock at night. It goes from 6 o'clock at night to 6 o'clock at night the next day. So the, the Feast of Dedication, once again, we're on December the 24th. At least it's at 6 p.m. So again, a festival or a, a celebration was something that Jesus would have done because it was in accordance with the law and Jesus fulfilled the law. What does the word Haggai mean? Festive. Festive. Let's turn back to Haggai for our last point, point number four. Verse 18. Consider now from this day and upward, from the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, even from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. So number four, consider the Lord himself the Savior of all mankind. Here it's using the, uh, the words concerning the foundation of the temple. But the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, in our Christian life, no foundation can be laid other than Jesus Christ. And it emphasizes in 1 Peter chapter 2, 6 through 8, that Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone the foundation of all building for our Christian life. Now let's look here in chapter 2, verses 4 through 9. Let now be, yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O jo Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all the people of the land, saith the Lord, and work. For I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts, according to the word that I covenanted with you, when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens, and the earth, and the sea, and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. This silver is mine, the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 9, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts, and in this place will I give peace, 
saith the Lord of hosts. Again, the Lord's talking here concerning the temple historically, but prophetically, he is specifically talking about himself, how he will be over all the nations. And he says this by talking about Zerubbabel. So he's using an illustration of a man concerning himself. And he says this again in chapter 3, almost the exact same thing about how he's going to overthrow the heathen and how he's going to be in charge of all things. But how does he finish this up? He finishes it up in verse 23. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, I will take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shatil, saith the Lord, and I will make thee as a signet, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord of hosts. He says, I will make thee as a signet. This is a seal of authority. Oftentimes it's in a ring. Notice the word sign in the word signet. Turn back to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. We're almost finished. Thank you for your patience tonight. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him after the custom of the law. Then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. So here's what happens. Jesus Christ does come, just as, he was, prophe- uh, ju- just as it was prophesied concerning him. And there he is... Um, Mary and Joseph bring him in, and they show him to Simeon, and he had this promise that he would see God in the flesh before he died. And he takes this child, and he doesn't take the child and look up to God and say thank you. He looks at the child himself and says, Lord, I lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. And then in verse 34, he says, because this is the sign, this is the authority that was in the signet that would be spoken against. Let's look at one other place and see what that is. Turn to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, verse 39. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So the sign of Jesus is that of the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection. Why why is it so important uh, concerning the first advent, the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh? Because that's how we get salvation, is through Jesus Christ. And that's what people speak against. They don't want to hear about that. They want to hear about how good they are. They want to hear about what deed they need to do to get to heaven. Why do we go into all the world? Why do we go to the Philippines? 
Why will I be going to India again in February? We go because we have the gospel. Jesus is the light. They are in darkness and they need Him. Christmas considerations. This Christmas, consider your priorities. Consider your work for the Savior. Consider the representation of the Christmas day and consider the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank You for Your kindness to us. Lord, without the Word of God, we would know nothing about You at all, and we certainly would not know of the Gospel. We thank You so much for giving us the truth, and as we consider these things, we want to thank You for coming here to this earth so that we could be saved. We want to tell You that we love You. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.